Gavin Newlands. Madam Deputy Speaker, um, in the wake of Scotland's referendum on independence last year, the Prime Minister set, set up the Smith Commission to secure cross-party recommendations for further devolution of powers to the Scottish Parliament. With regard to the constitutional aspects of the report, the Smith Commission recommended that the permanence of the Scottish Parliament and Government be established in statute, ensuring that devolution could not be abolished at the whim of a Westminster Government. Therefore, I sincerely welcome the UK Government's latest U-turn on this issue. The provision should have been included at the inception of the Scotland Bill, but I welcome the Government coming round to our way of thinking. Better late than never, some might say. The, the Smith Commission report also stated that the sole convention will be put in a statutory footing by the UK Government. Unfortunately, the UK Government's proposals in this area fall far short of Smith, despite the Prime Minister's pledge to implement the Commission's proposals in full. The UK Government's current clause in the Scotland Bill states that the Parliament of the United Kingdom will not normally legislate with regard to devolved matters without the consent of the Scottish you, Parliament. Time. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Government's current position in this matter is ridiculous and it risks weakening, not strengthening, the Seal Convention and is at odds with the Smith Commission's report. The vow from the Government that they will not normally legislate on devolved areas simply will not suffice. It raises serious concerns and it would set a dangerous precedent. Indeed, in my work in the Immigration Bill Committee, I can already see one instance where the UK Government's immigra Immigration Bill encroaches on devolved areas in Scotland. Mm -hmm. For example, immigration is, of course, a competence reserved to the UK Parliament. However, housing is not. It is devolved to the Scottish Parliament. Mm -hmm. Yet, as part of the Immigration Bill, the UK Government will introduce the right to rent. Mm -hmm. This is a piece of legislation that will compel landlords to establish a person's legal status before they can offer a tenancy, introducing penalties for landlords who fail to comply. Mm -hmm. The UK Government's right to rent provisions in the Immigration Bill will be extended to Scotland through secondary legislation without a legislative consent or so motion being debated and passed by the Scottish Parliament. Furthermore, consultation with the Scottish Government and housing stakeholders in Scotland ahead of the Bill being introduced is said to have been rushed and extremely limited. The Scottish Government are very concerned at this development and the Scottish Housing Minister wrote to the Immigration Minister asking for a meeting on this very subject, only to be arrogantly rebuffed by the Minister. In his reply, he said, the right to rent scheme and the new measures in the Immigration Bill relate to immigration control, which is not devolved. So far, correct. Before going on to say these measures restrict access to housing. Mm -hmm. Now, Madam Deputy Speaker, we've already established that housing is very much a devolved issue. So, so much for the respect agenda, much lauded by Prime Minister Cameron. Mm -hmm. The SNP's new clause 35 to the Scotland Bill. Um, in regard to placing the Seal Convention on a statutory footing is pragmatic and will ensure that the Bill lives up to the Smith Commission's recommendations. The UK Government's approach to policy making, where there are wider implications for devolved areas, can be ignorant and churlish. Mm. There is no better example for this than the Conservatives' much chilled desire to abolish the Human Rights Act. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Honourable Gentleman is making an incredibly compelling argument again about legalising and codifying the Seal Convention. So I do say to him, if he wishes to push new clause 35 to the vote uh, in a few minutes' time, we'd be more than happy to support him on that and take this forward. Otherwise, I'm afraid it's going to go down to the other place to deal with. Well, I appreciate the, the Shadow Secretary's um, um, support on the matter. I'll take up with my colleagues. The Human Rights Act is vital to us in many ways. It gives us the right to life, freedom from torture, right to liberty and security, freedom of thought, belief and religion, right to private and family life, freedom of expression, assembly and association, and the right to free ed elections and education, to name a few. The Human Rights Act extends to all public authorities in Scotland, our schools, our local governments, our NHS and our police. Amendment 204 would absolutely, beyond any doubt, whatever devolve responsibility for human rights to the Scottish Parliament to help safeguard human rights for those living in Scotland. The potential abolition of the Human Rights Act will undoubtedly have profound implications on devolution in Scotland and across these islands. It would be an affront to democracy for the Conservative Government to use its slender majority in this House to abolish the Human Rights Act when it does not command support in either Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. Our new clause would require the UK Government, regardless of political hue, to seek a legislative consent motion in all instances of Westminster legislation affecting areas devolved to Scotland. It would also require the UK Government to consult with the Scottish Government on the legislation that would have such an impact in Scotland. The Tory Government, a party who the people of Scotland delivered a vote of no confidence in at the last election, a party with only one MP in Scotland, have rejected each and every amendment put forward by the SNP Westminster Group, a group that is 95 per cent of Scotland's MPs. That begs the question, why are amendments to the Scotland Bill that are supported by an overwhelming majority of Scotland's MPs ultimately rejected? 
The Conservatives and indeed Labour must stop ducking, diving and obfuscating when it comes to strengthening the Scotland Bill and must stop playing games with Scotland's powers. The people of Scotland are watching. It's time they were listened to.